In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Well, a very warm welcome to our online and telephone service here at St Peter's Church in the parish of West Blatchington in the city of Brighton and Hove. My name is the Reverend Tim and I'm the rector here at St Peter's and it's great that you've decided to join with us this morning as we worship the living God in spirit and truth. I'm going to open our time together with a prayer. So let's just be quiet wherever we are, where we're, we're sat, just make ourselves comfortable as we pray together. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Amen. Well, we're going to now continue by singing together with our opening hymn. So if you're able to, to join in at home to sing up, maybe to stand up as we sing together. Jonah, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days! Days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on a sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew 
casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Well, the theme that links today's Bible readings, our psalm, the reading from Jonah and the gospel reading, is that one word that Jesus just spoke, repent. And that's what we're looking at today. What does it mean to repent? Now, what is repentance? Why do we need it and how can we do it? That's what we're going to be grappling with today. But I wonder, just that word repent, what does it make you think of? Maybe it makes you think of a, of a loud preacher holding a sign in the middle of the city with the words, repent, repent, the kingdom is nigh. But when you get down to it, I think for most people, this idea of repenting or repentance probably means one of two things. Firstly, people might think it means just feeling bad about yourself, feeling bad about yourself, maybe because there's something that you've done that you regret, or you just feel bad about who you are. That's repentance, isn't it? Feeling bad about yourself. But the other idea that people sometimes have is about, well, repentance is all about trying to change your behaviour or try to just get rid of your addiction. You've just got to try harder. That's what repenting means. Stop doing that thing and, well, start doing this thing instead. Well, is repentance either of those things? Is it just feeling sad or is it just trying to change your behaviour? Many people have thought so. But is that what the Bible tells us repentance is? Well, this morning, we're going to have a look for ourselves. And we're going to begin by asking our first question, what is repentance? The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. So, what is repentance? Well, one writer puts it like this. To repent is to have a change of self, heart and mind, that abandons former dispositions and results in a new self. You see, apart from it being about feeling bad about yourself or or trying to change your behaviour, the Bible says repentance is actually freedom. It's about actually living the best possible life and it brings about a whole new self. Now Jonah himself is an example of repentance for us because actually at the beginning of of Jonah he didn't want to go to the city of Nineveh at all. It was only after he tried to run the other way and got well swallowed up by a great big fish that Jonah actually repented. He turned around and he did the job that God called him to do. And that was to take a special message from God to the people of Nineveh. And that message was that unless they stopped living for themselves and harming others, well, judgment would fall on them. What do they do? Well, they hear the message that Jonah has and look at what they do. They believed. They fasted to show they were serious and everyone took off their fanciest clothes from the richest to the poorest and instead put on old sacks to wear to show how sorry they were. We're then told this, when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. 
You see, the people's repentance brought about their safety, freedom from judgment. Now, how long-lasting that would be would remain to be seen. Because repentance isn't just a one-off thing that we do. It's an ongoing part of Christian discipleship. It's part of how we are brought into God's kingdom. We repent and turn to God. But at the same time, it's ongoing repentance. It's evidence that we are members of that kingdom and that we continue to repent. So that's what repentance looks like. But I want us to really understand what is repentance? What actually is it? Well, last Sunday on on Halloween, it was the 505th anniversary of the start of the Reformation. And on that day, 505 years ago, a German monk named Martin Luther, perhaps you've heard of him, he nailed a piece of paper to the church notice board in his town. And on that piece of paper, he took issue with some of the things that the Roman Catholic Church was doing that he thought was wrong. Particularly the fact that they were selling promises of time off in punishment for the dead and for the people's dead loved ones. And they could do that by giving money to the church. And Martin Luther didn't like that. But he also had really wrestled with this idea of repentance. You see, for people in those days, people didn't have their own Bibles like you and me have. Only the church had access to the Bible. So they chose to explain repentance in a particular way. And they did it with the Latin word poetentium, which roughly translated didn't actually mean repentance, but means do penance. So the church taught that what Jesus was telling people to do wasn't to repent, but to do acts, to do penance, to make up for the bad things that they've done. But you see, the reformers, people like Martin Luther, well, they looked at the original languages that the Bible was written in and worked out, hang on a moment, that's not what it means. The word for the uh, repentance in the original language in Greek and the New Testament is actually made up of two words. The word for about and the word for mind. So about mind or, or change mind. So they worked out that when Jesus told the people to repent, he wasn't telling them to try and make up for the bad things they were doing by doing good things. He was telling them to change their whole mind, to change the way they think about God and to believe something different. And then as a result, their actions would follow. They would become new, to to run around, to turn around and and live a completely different life centred on Jesus the Messiah. You see, the idea is with this change of mind, well, it comes a turning back to God, turning back to God with a changed mind. You see, repentance is about restoring a relationship that was broken. And it's why Jesus gives us that wonderful story in Luke's Gospel of the prodigal son. This prodigal son who, after realising he's made all these terrible mistakes, well, he thinks he can make it up to his father by doing good stuff for him. But on his way back home, the father sees him from the distance. Well, he, he hitches up his cloak, he runs towards his son, and he flings his arms around him in loving acceptance and forgiveness. You see, repentance is all about turning back to the God of love light and life, who is ready there to receive us. And the reason why we have to do it is without this repentance, our relationship with God is broken. It's like we remain the prodigal son, still far away from the father's forgiveness and love. You see, that's why repentance marks the the start of the Christian journey. But on the other hand, repentance doesn't stop. It's it's not a one-off thing. You see, basically, none of us are repentance graduates. In fact, when Martin Luther, that monk, was nailing up those complaints against his church, he started by saying this, when our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said, repent, he willed the entire life of believers to be one of repentance. Did you see that? The entire life of believers to be one of repentance. You see, Martin Luther got it. Repentance isn't just a one-off event. You see, it marks the entire life of a believer. So each morning when we wake up, we choose to repent. We choose to turn away from doing things the way we want to instead doing things the way that God wants us to. 
Every day we turn from living life for ourselves and instead turn to living our lives for God. It's a conscious decision that each of us need to make day by day. Because repentance in someone's life is, is the sign that someone is actually growing closer to God, not further away. Do you know, I, I remember when I was younger, I was a younger Christian, and, and there were certain older men in my church that, that I looked up to, that I thought were, were just amazing. And, and I hoped that one day I would be like them. And in fact, I still do. But particularly, I, I thought that they had reached this stage of, of perfection in their Christian lives where, where they no longer needed to repent. They were almost perfect because they had outgrown all the things that, that I and, and other people struggle with. I couldn't wait to be like them. But you know, as, I, as I've got older, I've learned that the truth is you never outgrow the need for repentance, whether that's repenting of the little things or the bigger things too. Well, the story goes that it was a bright Sunday morning in 18th century London. But Robert Robinson's mood was anything but sunny. All along the streets, there were people hurrying to church. But in the midst of the crowd, Robinson was a lonely man. The sound of the church bells reminded him of years past when his faith in God was strong and the church was an integral part of his life. But it had been years since he had last set foot in a church. Years of wandering, disillusionment and gradual defection from the God he once loved. That love for God, once fiery and passionate, had slowly burned out within him, leaving him dark and cold inside. And Robinson heard the clip-clop, clip-clop of a horse-drawn carriage approaching behind him. And he turning, lifted, he lifted his hands to, to hail the driver, but then he saw that the, the cab was occupied by a young woman, dressed in finery, obviously off on her way to church. Well, he waved the driver on, but, but the woman in the carriage ordered it to be stopped. Sir, I, I'd be happy to share this carriage with you, she said to Robinson. Are you uh, going to church? Robinson was about to decline. Then he paused. Yes, he said at last, uh, I am going to church. He stepped into the carriage and sat down beside the young woman. As the carriage rolled forward, Robert Robinson and the woman exchanged introductions. Uh, and there was a flash of recognition in her eyes when he stated his name. That's an interesting coincidence, she said, reaching into her purse. She withdrew a small book of inspirational verses and she opened it to a ribbon bookmark and handed the book to him. I was just reading a verse by a poet named Robert Robinson. Could it be... He took the book, nodding. Yes, I wrote these words years ago. Oh, how wonderful, she exclaimed. <laughs> Imagine, I'm sharing a carriage with the author of these very lines. But Robinson barely heard her. He was absorbed in the words he was reading. They were words that would one day actually be set to music and become a great hymn of praise, familiar to generations of Christians. And those words were, come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for sounds of loudest praise. And his eyes slipped to the bottom of the page where he read, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. He could barely read the last few lines through the tears that brimmed in his eyes. I wrote these words and I've lived these words, prone to wander, prone to leave the God I love. The woman suddenly understood. But you also wrote, here's my heart, oh take and seal it. 
You can offer your heart again to God, Mr. Robinson. It's not too late. Now, it wasn't too late for Robert Robinson, and in that moment he did indeed turn his heart back to God and walked with him the rest of his days. And it's not too late for for you either, whether you need to turn to God for the first time or maybe you need to turn to him after a long time away like Robert Robinson. He is still there waiting and will gladly receive you. But perhaps you're, you're watching or listening to this today and the repentance that's needed in your life might not need to be as, as major as that. But there will be different things for, for all of us that need to be repented of, perhaps daily. In fact, our, our psalm it, it highlighted some pointers for us. Put not your trust in extortion. Basically, turn away from trying to make money off of people even if it's perfectly legal. Turn away from self-centred pride. Basically, don't set your hearts on, on money or what you can buy or achieve or store up for yourself. Don't set your heart on those things. You see, Jesus is calling all of us, whoever we are, to repent, whether in a big way or in a small way. He says, repent, return to me. So let me leave you with that thought of how you need to repent and return to him today.
as we have just heard, Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Let us all say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy and in our song we will praise our God. Let me lead us in in another prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death you have brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And now Claire is going to lead us in our prayers of intercession that have been written for us by Janet Hand. Lord God, you are always with us. Hear our prayers today as we offer ourselves in repentance. Hear our prayers for others and for ourselves and keep us in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us when we are negligent in seeking your companionship as we busy ourselves with our own concerns. We pray that we seek you first so that our lives will show your goodness through each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we praise you for the natural resources we are called to care for. Help us to explore ways where we can economise and live without excess and to be thankful for our freedom in being able to choose. Grant wisdom and generosity to the world delegates debating these issues in Glasgow. May the sufferings of those who are badly affected be alleviated with a just and equal sharing of the things that our earth provides. In the Anglican Communion this week, we particularly pray for the church and people suffering in Bangladesh. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we praise you for the gift of respect, for the dignity of human life. We pray for refugees arriving daily seeking refuge, that resources can be found to accommodate them. Give wisdom to those who are directly involved with their rehabilitation. We also pray for our local food bank, and are grateful for the time and compassion given by their helpers. We pray for an awareness of the need to share what we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In prayers for our diocese, we remember the Bishop of Lewis, Will Hazelwood, and we pray for the recruitment of personal assistant. In our parish, we pray for the Reverend Tim and for Curate Jan and their families. For all those who live in Sunning Hill Avenue and close, and we pray for the Bloomers Flower Group. We also pray for the work and safety of volunteers of the RNLI and our parish charity this month. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for those known to us who are sick and suffering and for all who minister to their needs. For Derek Pierce, John Locker and Ray Batchelor. Remembering too those we pray for in our monthly service. May they feel your healing presence in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We leave in your care those who have died in the faith of Christ, commending Linda Coppard, who died recently, and on the anniversaries of their deaths, we remember Les Craden, Chris Alabone, Keith Hodson, and Arthur Moody. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We come before you now, Lord, and drink in a moment of peace and pray that we may carry something of your joy, hope and love in our hearts today. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Collect for the third Sunday before Advent. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things, in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Do hope you can join us again next Sunday, which will be our Remembrance Sunday service, an important opportunity to give thanks to God for, for the life of men and women who have given the ultimate sacrifice of, of their lives in the service and care of this country and around the world. So do hope you can join us for that service next week, whether that's here in the church building for our parish Eucharist at 10 a.m. or online or on the telephone. And again, if you want to get in contact with us here at St. Peter's, do send us an email or give us a phone call. Um, even if it's maybe something, a question that you've got or maybe a question that someone in your family's got and you, you want to think, oh, I want to know more about that, and please do get in contact. It's, it's actually really thrilling for us to get those kind of emails and, and questions. It uh, keeps us thinking, keeps us praying about how to answer all the kind of questions that, that people have for us. So do encourage you to, to do that as and when that's necessary due to get in contact with us. And again, if you're able to support us here, um, the things that we do can only be done because of the support of our community, our church family. So whether you're able to make a one-off payment or whether you're able to uh, make an ongoing monthly donation to support the work of uh, St Peter's, um, then just click the link below in the, in the description of the video and then you can uh, be helping us. That's great. All sorts of different ways that people can give and, and help, but financial giving is a really big and important part of discipleship as well. So do hope that you can do that if that's uh, something that you'd like to find out more about. Well, let me now lead us in a final prayer. May the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>